This is Dr. Lance Davis, moving on to Dive Medicine Module 2, problems associated with diving that don't, do not, require hyperbaric oxygen treatment, and now we'll move to the non-emergent category. So again, lots of things can happen underwater to divers. Some of them are very routine, such as a, uh, cutting your hand on a shell. Uh, others are a little more exotic, getting stung by a lionfish or something like that. So let's just think about kind of how to manage these things and, and what to do with them. So obviously if you cut yourself underwater, that doesn't require the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. But what is important to know is that there are some specific tricks in medicine that go along with maritime, especially salt water injuries. Uh, there are bacteria in salt water that are fairly unique and may require a different form of management and even antibiotic use than the typical cuts that might be seen in an emergency room or urgent care. And sometimes those physicians aren't familiar with uh, this type of injury and so uh, I'm going to arm you with a little information. Also anytime uh, you're in, in this region, the Charleston, South Carolina region, if you have a cut, a bite, a barb, a sting, an envenomation, anything like that and it's not a tremendous emergency, it's not bleeding excessively and you can't stop it, you're not having an allergic reaction, you can certainly do some, some first aid at the scene and then contact me and we can talk it through and, and manage it the best way we can. So let's look at cuts from uh, a maritime environment, whether it's uh, on the surface or underwater, but having to do especially with salt water. Uh, first of all, often these types of wounds produce a lot of pus and fluid. They separate quite a bit and often uh, they should not be sutured. In other words, even a big open cut should really just be cleansed thoroughly with a non-iodine agent and should be uh, covered with a clean bandage and allowed to drain even over several weeks. If they're closed, that drainage might form a fluid pocket or even an abscess and lead to infection and more problems. Also, often underwater or even on the deck of a boat, if you get a cut, there may be particles of rust, particles of shells, particles of sand, various things that are in the wound, and sometimes it's best also to leave that kind of wound open to make sure that any small foreign bodies can work their way out. So in general, I rarely recommend that we suture a laceration, a cut, a puncture, a uh, torn piece of skin, anything like that that happens to do that happens in the salt water environment. Fresh water sometimes uh, may be a little different and that, that should be up to the discretion of the physician who's uh, working the case, uh, but salt water especially where most of the diving is done often want to leave those wounds open and bandaged. Uh, there are certain types of antibiotics to select if you suspect infection, if, you, uh, if you're worried about the location, uh, so this also might be time to consult me uh, specifically if there's not a compelling reason to go straight to an emergency room or urgent care. If you're away from the Charleston area and these things happen, certainly you can talk to Dan and usually uh, a Divers Alert Network and usually a, a Dan recognized facility will have someone who is knowledgeable in hyperbaric medicine usually will have a sense of undersea medicine as well and can help you and as always uh, you can email me and I, I can give you some basic advice if you describe the problem thoroughly. So that kind of goes with cuts, envenomations, bites, these types of things. Um, two other things to think about though. Is your tetanus status up to date? And all divers should be very up to date on their tetanus shot. I would say have a booster every five years just to make sure. 10 years is the outside range, but every five years should keep you very safe against tetanus should you get uh, a fish hook in your finger, a, a, an anchor chain, uh, cut to your finger, any of these things. And also is the risk of allergic reaction to some sort of uh, envenomation, a bite, that type of thing. And if you're prone to that at all uh, and you're offshore, you should have an EpiPen or epinephrine pen handy and those of you with tendencies towards allergies probably already have this. If not, you can talk to me about it and I can help you to set up uh, a first aid kit 
for your boat, for your dive shop, that type of thing with some emergent protocols for allergy or allergic reaction to some things that could happen in the diving or maritime environment. A few other things that happen in association with diving that are not considered emergencies, an ear squeeze, uh, ear pain that doesn't go away after a couple of times clearing, you might need to treat with some over-the-counter or prescription strength medications to open the ears up and let that subside. Uh, we certainly worry about but rarely see uh, a squeeze in a tooth uh, that can be very painful. You might have a small cavity letting air get in the cavity and then it expands as you're coming up. Extremely painful. Uh, and often painful enough to be considered an emergency, but really the, the dentist has to get a hold of this and drill a hole in the tooth for uh, compressed air in the tooth or a dental squeeze. Uh, a swimmer's ear, uh, if you dive and water is trapped in your ear, that's a warm, moist place. Bacteria and funguses love to grow there. Swimmer's ear, itchy, sometimes painful, and sometimes can get more serious. It's an infection in the external canal of the ear. I always recommend to prevent swimmer's ear, use a solution of one half rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and one half white vinegar mixed in a little tube. Run it into your ear after diving, squeegee it around a little bit, hold it for a few seconds, let it drain. Do the same thing with the other side, squeegee it around, let it drain. That should always prevent swimmer's ear. It's gonna kill those uh, organisms, bacteria and funguses right away. It's going to dry the water out of the ear and then the vinegar makes the ear canal more acidic and this is an environment that bugs don't like to grow in, bacteria and funguses. You don't want to use this solution to treat swimmer's ear once it's started uh, happening and you don't want to use a solution if you think you might have ruptured your eardrum. But if you have a normal healthy ear canal, you've been diving, rinse it with this solution, keep yourself from getting swimmer's ear. Symptoms of swim swimmer's ear, itching, pain, like I said, you kind of want to pull on your ear, feeling of congestion in there, and that's something that you can certainly contact me, or if I'm not your primary care physician, uh, about this, and we can get on that right away. Usually requires antibiotic ear drops, may require oral antibiotics, but uh, this is something that should be taken care of, but certainly not an emergency. So those are some of the things that happen uh, in association with diving that are not considered emergencies. And there's all kinds of other things. You know, you can sprain your arm, gotta keep that straight versus decompression sickness, but you can uh, do other little musculoskeletal injuries. Uh, you can get rashes, various sorts of skin problems uh, from your wetsuit, from things you might come in contact with. And these are all things that we could talk about, uh, but wouldn't require a rapid trip to the emergency department. So I'll stop there. If you have more questions about that, certainly ask them if you're coming in for a dive exam with me, or you can just email me at info at drlanceonline.com, info at drlanceonline.com, and I'll see what I can do for you.